Hey Sagelings and everybody else, uh, this is Blue and I want to join in on the conversation about why we have to fight back against Christian oppression, Christian apologetics, Christian this, Christian that. Um, there are people that say, think there is no point in fighting against it, but there is a very real point to it. The reason why we can honor our tradition, uh, practice witchcraft as much as we can today is because a lot of people fought for it. A lot of people went through hell. People died fighting for our freedoms. Freedoms are not free. We have to fight for them. And I'm seeing a lot of people that are not fighting for them because what they see is good for them. They don't think they're being oppressed, so they don't have to act out. But we have to. Um, as I commented on Azil's uh, video, um, we have a big problem with light workers because they have this concept of shunning negativity. Well, ne Christianity has a lot of negativity to it. And when they complain about paganism, that is an attack, that is also negativity. And so these light workers are just going to run away from it. They're not going to stand up for the, what they believe in. And if you're not going to stand for what you believe in, you're going to lose it. Um, so I sat in front of the computer for a while and I was writing down some points that I wanted to make. Here are some of the reasons why I believe every pagan should be fighting against Christianity to defend their beliefs and their use of witchcraft. Christianity, um, from the last time I looked, was 74% of the population in the United States. Okay, 74%. Paganism doesn't even make one full percent. We are basically outnumbered 1,000 to 1. So, when they move against us, when they vote against us, we don't stand a chance unless we work together to defend our beliefs. Uh, one such example is, you know, the military graves at Arlington. Um, there was a court battle that took over a year for a U.S. serviceman to have a Wiccan tombstone. The U.S. government did not recognize Wicca. The U.S. military refused to place any type of Wiccan tombstone. They had to sue for it. It cost them th thousands of dollars to do it. Something that we would want when we pass away was fought long and hard by a group of people. And so we need to make sure that this never stops. If you look at the news, you're going to see times where pagan prayer was an opening statement, an opening act at some city council meetings. Um, because the Supreme Court says if you are going to open up a public meeting, um, you have to allow all religions. You just can't have Christianity. A lot of Christians believe that uh, the United States is this Christian nation and you have freedom of religion as long as it is Christianity. Okay, that is how they view things. Well, I have seen multiple videos in which 
when somebody of another religion is giving opening prayer, the Christian, a, a majority of the Christians will walk out. Uh, some of them will speak during the other person. Um, invocation. Uh, they flip the person off. They are very disrespectful. They don't care about us. Okay? Um, there are cities out there that moved against public prayer or an opening prayer for their city council meetings because of the Supreme Court's ruling. You see, when they found out that they would have to open the floor to Satanists, they decided that it was better to have no public prayer than allow a Satanist to do public prayer. That is something that bothers them. So they are going to move to repress us in some manner. Now, Alabama, unfortunately, is something that we have to pay attention to. Um, okay, look at these uh, terrible abortion ban laws that a lot of these southern states are passing. Well, once they kill all um, abortion rights, what do you think they're going to move to next? Look how much they hate us in so many locations they can then move to denying our rights to religion because they are doing revi revisions to U.S. history. Did you know that there is a group of people that wanted to change history, saying that the uh, Continental Congress had Bibles at their meeting and they opened it with prayer? It didn't happen that way, but that's what they want to do. Now, you might think that that's just a small little change, no big deal. But this is part of their long game to say that this is a Christian nation. So if they can convince enough people that the founding fathers were devout Christians and they were trying to apply Christian standards to the American nation, they can then start to chip away at our non-Christian beliefs. That's what they did with abortion. They were chipping away. You know, they started, you know, with 26 weeks. Oh, no, let's go 24. No, let's do 22. They were going around chipping pit by bit until they are able to outright ban abortions in these states. And they can do the same thing to our beliefs. So we have to stand up against this. Now, there are many, many stories. If you look for them, you'll see them of cities uniting to harass non-Christians out of their cities. Um, they do this a lot to atheists as well because Christians do not trust atheists. They hate atheists. And so they have went and they have done things like turning off their utilities. That's right. There have been cities that decided that those atheists down there don't deserve electricity. They are willing to deny people like us basic utilities because their religion is saying that they have to punish us because we are somehow second class citizens. There is a small town not too far away from where I live where there was an incident in high school in a woodworking class a guy was making a Wiccan ritual table and once the teacher found out about it the teacher says you can't make it you will have to make something else that teacher was fired by the way but still I mean this is the axe some are small some are grand but all of these acts are working against us. 
there is a YouTube channel and there are hundreds of thousands like it um, called Call for an Uprising. Now, this person is a Christian zealot. He is a radical. He is openly campaigning against us. I have watched videos, and I actually had made the, a copy of this into one of my other videos, where he is saying that witches need to be pushed into the forest and put in cages. How can pagans out there, how can witches out there stand by idol when there are people like this out there? We have to let people know that this is dangerous. Okay, if they put us in cages, they're basically saying we are animals and we do not deserve to have a single legal right. Okay, and that bothers me. That's why I hate call for an uprising. Because he does not care about people like us. You know, we try to respect other people's religions. He's not. He is the a type of person that is going to call anything and everything satanic. And that bothers me. Um, he is making outlandish claims against witches and pagans. Um, in multiple videos, he will make claims that during... October, there is a spike in children abductions and that it is us pagans, us witches, that are going around abducting kids for blood rituals. Okay? How can we stand by silently with this? Because this will turn other people against us. This is the propaganda against paganism. This is the propaganda against witchcraft. And so if we don't counter it, it just grows bigger and bigger, stronger and stronger. And it can hurt us badly. Uh, many years ago, I was in the Yahoo religious chat rooms. And I have debated many, many Christians. You, I wonder if you guys realize that they believe that there are two standards when it comes to the laws. You can have one law and it means one thing for if you're Christian, another thing if you are not a Christian. This is the double standard that Christianity has. And... Very few people act against it. You know, I remember one story online about Mr. Pat Robertson, you know, from the 700 Club. He told a family that they should not allow their son to be friends with a Wiccan female at school. Okay. We try to build a community. We try to get along with people, but Christianity has leaders like Pat Robertson who are so wrapped up in their religion, they spread hate. Another video that I saw, and I, I just saw this one recently, and I've been working on a video response to it, it's called 10 Signs of Witchcraft in the Workplace, in which this Christian zealot is turning the tables illogically and proclaiming that witches are dominating the workplace. We are oppressing Christians and that because he was saying, do you go to work? Do you feel oppressed? Do you feel like you're unable to express your religion? Well, that's witchcraft. No, it's not witchcraft. It's the law. While you can have your beliefs, you can even have a little cross on your desk if you want to, but you are not allowed to push your beliefs on another person because that other person has the right to follow 
whatever beliefs they want. But this is what they are pushing. They are saying that since they can't um, express their religion completely, it's witchcraft and oppression. Christians constantly demonize other beliefs. Um, like I was talking about, call for an uprising. He calls everything that other religions do as satanic. He is going by the old school that, you know, hey, if it's not godly, it's satanic. This just shows how uneducated this guy is. And that is what makes him dangerous. And what makes so many Christians out there so damn dangerous. Christianity does not promote education. They want you to be dumb. They want you to just believe. Because if you're dumb and you believe, you can be convinced into doing anything and everything in the name of God. And how many times have we watched the news and people have stated they've done some tremendously bad things in the name of God? I mean, that is sad. And so I just, I hate it when people like call for an uprising is taking something so simple and calling it satanic. And the other thing about call for an uprising is the double standard. Um, there are things that Christians do that are absolutely monstrous and it just turns a blind eye to them. I did a video recently, well, not so recently, um, Call for an Uprising was talking about blood rituals and how um, supposedly pagans, witches, are abducting people. But I did a video about how there's this church, I believe, in South Carolina that was importing Brazilians and using them as slave labor. They were literally taking their visas away from them and making them build this church. They were they weren't getting paid or barely got paid. Um, they had to live in these large one-room buildings. Um, they did not get individual housing. They were deceived into coming to the U.S. and then used as slave labor. And, you know, they... That's the double standard. We are accused of so many things that the Christians do every day, but the Christians refuse to police themselves and ignore whatever else they do. Um, and it, it hurts us. The burning times really never ended. Um, if you look at the history of witchcraft and paganism, you will you need to first realize how long it took for some of these anti witchcraft laws to be removed. There was a witchcraft an anti witchcraft law in Canada, if I remember right, that was removed I think it was like two to, two to three years ago. And so it was illegal to practice witchcraft in so many areas. Um this was, you know, a war against us. In Africa, they still burn witches alive. Okay? They still do it. All you have to do is look it up. And so the burning times never really ended. And if you remember that little Bible verse, you know, suffer not a witch to live. It still happens in the United States. There was, back in the chat rooms, I talked to a young lady. She was from Texas, and she was just walking um, in town. This guy walked up to her, hit her hard, knocked her down, and he yelled, Suffer not a witch to live. So if she was somewhere else, he might have killed her. But this is the mentality of Christians. And then, you know, you look at Hollywood. Look how they perceive us. 
Okay, now yes, you have your little comedies like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, where all it's also cutesy. But look at a majority of the movies and all that, you know, witches they're hiding behind a disguise, and also when their magic comes out, they are transformed into this green-skinned monstrosity with a hooked nose, warts, uh, deformities because magic is evil in their eyes and this is what makes us look bad and you know christianity loves the victimhood um the one thing i cannot understand is how can an outnumbered group uh proclaim to be persecuted um i'm sorry that came out wrong how can an outnumbered group persecute the majority like i said christianity is 74 percent of the population but i have seen it time and time again where you can have a large group of christians and by god if one person speaks out against it they are being persecuted i have went into chat rooms i have went to forums where i expressed a pagan witchcraft point of view and all of a sudden they're proclaiming prosecution outnumbered 25 to 1 and i'm persecuting them now another bad thing about christianity is it's part of their dogma to spread the word um, they will force it at work they believe that the bible and god and the u.s will uh, support them spreading the word doesn't matter what your rights are they have a god-given privilege purpose to spread the word and they will not stop and that's why we have to be more vigilant to fight against Christianity <sighs> they are persecuted because they are forced to refrain from pushing their beliefs that is their persecution um, in the Bible Belt, we have a lot of people that want to push Christianity on others at the workplace. There are reports of people fighting back, suing their employer for multiple million dollars because they are allowing their employees to push their beliefs. Uh, one case I remember, this guy was working in a company and he was not a Christian. He was a pagan and he didn't have anything on his desk. But constantly the zealot Christians were putting their little pamphlets on his desk, which was violating his rights. And he had enough. He recorded it. He documented it. He sued them and he got, I believe it was $2.5 million dollars. And Christians hate this because that means that they have to restrain themselves and they don't think they have to. Another bad thing here is look how crimes are viewed when it when the accused person of committing the crime is not a Christian. I remember there was a case in Florida where um, it was a murder case, and the accuser's wife was a pagan. They had to bring that out. There have been multiple crimes throughout the U.S. where all of a sudden, if it is a pagan, it's front page news, and they have to mention, well, this person was a pagan, this person was a Wiccan. But... How many other crimes are committed every damn day by Christians and they don't mention it? I even did a video many, many years ago talking about how serial killers were Christians. Did you know that um, Ted Bundy, one of the most prolific serial killers in the United States, was a Methodist? In fact, he was so popular, so charismatic, he was a leader of a children's group in the Methodist church. 
But the media will not tell you that because, hey, shh. Um, I talked earlier about the um, how Christians have a double standard. And it's how they convert people. Because, you know, if how they view non-Christians as being lost and confused. So if you're not Christian, you're second class, and somehow you're lost and confused. You're dumb and all that. Well, I have found that most non-Christians are pretty damn intelligent. We're not lost. We are not confused. We are just living our lives as we see fit. And they think that we are disgusting. We are evil. We are up to no good and such. And which leads me to the final point here is sexual misconduct in Christianity compared to paganism. The Catholic Church and probably other denominations of churches have a history of moving ministers, pastors, whatever you want to call them, around if they are accused of molesting children. So the churches allow a minister to molest this city, then move to another city. They are not standing up and stopping this. How many times has church leaders embezzled money? They love to demand that we follow a certain standard, and yet, how many damn ministers have been caught, you know, doing drugs, paying for prostitutes, homosexuality, and all that? They are willing to turn a blind eye to their standards when it comes to themselves. I mean, good God, look at Trump. All right, you know, adultery is supposed to be a sin, but yet, from what I have read, he has had multiple affairs. Huh, I know, surprise. Paid off porn stars. So right there, he is not an upstanding person, but yet these evangelicals, these radical Christians are going to turn a blind eye to his improprieties, but then they are going to focus, you know, with a magnifying glass on every little thing that you and I do. Okay? I am a pagan, I am a witch, and they will study every little thing that I do and complain about it, but turn a blind eye when Donald Trump tells people to grab him by the pussy. Okay? That's why I fight against Christianity. Now, I have tried in my channel to be a little bit more positive. There are times where I force myself to not say anything when I see some of these crazy Christian concepts and actions. But I do try to fight back as much as I can. Um, I've created characters with my animation because it's a way to fight back, how to act out. Why do you think I call their savior Jeebus? Because I'm fighting back. I think I need to do more videos now about Christianity because even though I try to be more positive, I think I have to fight back because so many other people aren't willing to. So that is my rant tonight. I want to thank everybody for listening if you lasted this long. So please have yourself a good night. Be at peace. But if you are not a Christian, remember, if you don't fight back, if you don't stand your ground, you are at high risk for losing what you have today. Take care. Be at peace.